Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. First of all, um, my apologies for no video last week. Um, I did film a Friday Reads only to discover that I didn't have internet, it was broken and it took me all weekend to fix it and by that point the Friday Reads was completely out the window and out of date and everything so um, I didn't post anything. Um, I'm still waiting for my November Alcret to arrive so this is not an unboxing video, this is something a little bit different. Um, a couple of months ago when I was at Conflux, the camp local camper speculative fiction convention, I attended a meeting of the Australian Fairy Tale Society's Canberra Fairy Tale Ring um, and I really quite enjoyed myself. Um, it was a good discussion about the particular fairy tale that was being discussed, which was the Handless Maiden. Um, and so I did a little research and basically the Australian Fairy Tale Society picks a different fairy tale to discuss every two months. Um, there are fairy tale rings in some of the largest cities around the country. So, um, like I said, Canberra's got one. I think Sydney and Melbourne have them as well. Um, I'm not sure about the other cities. But so those are local groups that get together to discuss the ring. Um, but yeah, it's all about sort of discussing and promoting and creating fairy tales and Australian fairy tales as well. The particular focus on that. Um, each, every two months there's a new fairy tale picked. Um, there's some discussion points sent out and a recommended reading list sent out. Um, so yeah, and so I decided to join the society and this, this weekend will be my first actual official meeting as a member of the Canberra Fairy Tale Ring and the uh, current fairy tale is Snow White. Anyway, so to wrap this up a little bit, um, one of the things that's encouraged in the fairy tale society is creative expressions and academic expressions and sort of discussion and responses to the various fairy tales. So I'm not feeling hugely creative, but I do have some thoughts about Snow White in particular. Snow White as compared to the modern adaptation by and rewrite by Catherine M. Valenti called Six Gun Snow White, which is a was a Hugo nominated novella a few years back, I think in 2014, um, which I remember reading back then and I've just reread it this month um, with this kind of in mind and I have some thoughts about it. So the thing about what we, we tend to think of as the story of Snow White, in my version at least of Grimm's Fairy Tales, it's actually called Snowdrop and Snow White and Rose Red is a completely different story. But, you know, most of us know the Disney story of Snow White, which is basically the story of Snowdrop with the dwarves, the miners, with the evil stepmother and the mirror and all of that kind of stuff. So I recently, you know, read my Grimm's Fairy Tales and so read that story. And then I decided to reread Six Gun Snow White. Now, Six Gun Snow White, it has all the kind of structural elements and motif motifs of Snow White or Snowdrop as, as it's also called. Um, but thematically in particular, it turns on its head. So Six Gun Snow White is set in the Wild West in America. And Snow White herself is actually what you might call a half caste. She's the daughter of a white American mining magnate who keeps finding silver and gold and jewels in, and mining them out of the earth and a Native American woman who he coerced into being his bride. And of course, Snow White's mother dies at birth. And so she's left on her own with the servants for a long time. That's one of the common things. There's an absent dead mother, absent father, because he's always off trying to find new veins of preciousness to mine. And so she's left to raise herself with the servants pretty much. But she's given anything she could possibly want. Um, you know, she's got a pistol that her father gave her. And every time she's good, he gives her a new red pearl, um, which is where the red comes in. She's got raven black hair, but the key to one of the themes, which is a the theme of racism in this story, is that she'll never be Snow White because she's half Native American. Anyway, so it's got, like I said, all of the structure and motifs of the original Snow White. It's got the absent father. It's got the colours. It's got the evil stepmother who he ends up marrying. 
without telling that he's actually got a daughter. Um, it's got the mirror. It's got the hunter, you know, the servant that is sent after her. It's got the poisoned death on the third attempt where she eats the apple and she, you know, dies, dies. Um, it's got the glass coffin. It's got the mining. It's got the seven people who take her in. Or in this case, they're not dwarves. But so it's got all those structural elements, but it turns it on its head. So Six Guns Snow White, there's a lot in it about female control and independence. For example, Snow White herself, um, she's the one that leaves. She doesn't get sent away by the evil stepmother. She leaves. She decides that she's had enough and she's going. And so she leaves. And the hunter is, in fact, sent to hunt her down for reasons that, be, you know, that, you know, the stepmother actually needs her for something. It's also a lot about motherhood. So you've got Snow White's mother who is taken by force by this white man who wants to marry her, even though she wants nothing to do with him. She's married, she is impregnated, and then she dies. But later on, A, Snow White goes looking for her mother's people although she doesn't end up reaching them because she finds out that she's not going to fit in there either um and also when the stepmother comes to bring her the various ways of dying for the three deaths she disguises herself sort of i think as the dead mother that snow white's been longing for for so long but also there's a son of a stepmother and this is where the mirror comes in. Because in the mirror, in the original, you know, the Wicked Queen says, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all. That's not what the mirror is for here. The mirror is some sort of old magic here. And there is a version of the stepmother on the other side of the mirror, a version of the world on the other side of the mirror. And when the stepmother announces she's pregnant, she never shows, shows signs of pregnancy. But in the mirror, the mirror version of her, is pregnant and the mirror version of her gives birth quite graphically in front of Snow White who's watching and then the child is therefore stuck in the mirror and this is where the hunter comes in because after Snow White leaves the child I mean the stepmother she needs Snow White's heart to put into the mirror to get her son out and so that's why she sends the hunter, and so Snow White actually beats up the hunter. She shoots him and she says, look, I've got no no quarrel with you. I will send you back and I'll send you back with the heart of this deer. So when the mother uses the heart that she thinks is Snow White's, you know, also, so I should say, her actual name is Gun That Sings, to get the child out of the mirror, the child is half human, half deer. He's got like deer legs. Um, which horrifies the evil stepmother. Um, which so that's why she knows that that's how she knows that Snow White is still alive. So that's different. So it's about her wanting a child that's not Snow White, that's her own, and doing it in an evil kind of a way. Um, so there's a lot of motherhood stuff in there. I'll just look at my notes. There's a lot of racism stuff, and this is what always pings me: racism and colonialism. So you've got the father who is basically ripping things out of the earth to get wealthy and he's therefore taking, and he's also taking the wife from the her people and making her miserable. He's just taking, 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 which is a theme of colonialism. But the racism, the, where, th this is where the name Snow White comes in because the stepmother comes in and she sees gun that, guns that sing and she says, you will never be Snow White. You will never be that fashionable pale colour. And so she calls her Snow White because it is what she will never be. And part of the tortures she, she puts on her stepdaughter is that she keeps giving her these, every week, these baths in milk to try and make her white, where she like literally holds her under this bath of milk until she's flailing and almost drowning in an attempt to wash away the colour of her skin. And I find that absolutely fascinating. And it's these last two things, the colonialism and 
the racism, which is why I think this, this story could also be told in Australia. Like this version, this Six Gun Snow White would have also worked in an Australian context because it sounds a lot like what happened to the Indigenous people in Australia. It was all about in, not integration, but assimilation, assimilating a native people into white culture where they would never quite fit in, as an attempt to wipe out the culture that was already there, to wipe out the colour of their skin. You know, half castes taken away from their indigenous parent, taken away because they might be able to fit in to a culture, but they never really did. And so that's why the, I think that's why this version, Six Gun Snow White, appeals to me so much. So, I mean, yeah, there are some similarities. There's a lot about vanity. It's the stepmother's vanity in that she doesn't want to lose her figure. Well, that's the implication. That's why the pregnancy happens in the mirror is because she doesn't want to lose her figure. Um, she, she doesn't want the son that's half deer. Um, and the, but there are also differences. So even though there's the glass coffin, the seven people, instead of being dwarves that take Snow White in, there are seven women who are on the run from society. There's a form of whore. There's a form of bank robber. There are, you know, beaten wives. There are these women that are living in this little village. There's seven of them. And there's no men. And they don't want any men. They don't want any law. They just want to live their lives. And so they take Snow White in. And the other really different part of this story is the ending. Because in... Snow White, she gets put in the glass coffin. They end up taking her in as part of a travelling freak show, a circus. Um, but she, she then just gets stored away. And she wakes up like a hundred years later. Because, not on purpose, not because a prince has come to kiss her. And so the apple comes out. It's because where she was being stored, there was a flood. Her coffin was swept out and bashed up against a tree. It all breaks apart and she wakes up. And there's no handsome prince. She goes, she she sleeps with a few people because she felt like it. She goes off to university. She gets a physics degree. You know, and there's no handsome prince. There's no handsome prince at all. Which is, again, comes into the whole, the whole independent women, the women's independence theme. You know, Snow White, she goes off. She does what she likes. Like the mining part, it's not the seven dwarves that are doing the mining. Snow White runs out of money after she's run away from home. And so she goes down the mines to earn money so she can continue on her journey, you know. And it's like, and even when she knows, she knows that it's not her mother visiting her door. It's the evil stepmother trying to kill her. And she deliberately bites into that apple. And it's deliberately portrayed as suicide because she wants to join her mother, you know. And then when she wakes up, she goes and she lives a normal life. She has boyfriends. She has a career in physics. So this is, you know, so I really, really like this story. It's, it's a very brutal read. And it's a, like, it's, so yeah, it's got the structure of Snow White. It's got the structure of Snowdrop. But thematically, it turns it on its head. And that's what's really great about the story. So I've been rambling for a while now. Um, yeah, so I did this because I've joined the Australian Fairy Tale Society and I'm going to post it and I'm probably going to talk about some of this stuff at the meeting on Sunday. And yeah, I hope I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it kind of interesting. Let me know. Um, and if you want me to, I'll, I'll do more of these videos for the Fairy Tale Society, um, for whatever fairy tale is of the month if I have ideas about it. So yeah, that's Snow White and the Cat Valenti version, Six Guns Snow White. Bye.